mass protests in Haiti, like France's yellow vest, threatened Milan oligarchic structure as Haitians throughout the country seethed with rage over Jovenel Moïse, blatant corruption, gross mismanagement, and numerous scandals. The Neo Duvalier, Duvalier, I can't say that, sorry, era in Haiti has largely been orchestrated by the U.S. and is now in danger of finally falling apart. Throughout recent Latin American history, it is hard to find a country that has thoroughly been manipulated and plundered by the United States as Haiti has. After over a century of U.S. intervention from the 19 year long U.S. military occupation that began from in 1915 to the 2010 election rigged by the Hillary Clinton run State Department. Haiti has become the ultimate neoliberal liberal experiment that has forced its people to live in conditions so horrible that the rivers of sewage often run through the city streets. Yet much as in 1791, when Haiti was the site of, first, of the first successful slave revolt in the Americas, today the people of Haiti seem to have finally had enough of being slaves in all but name and are taking to the streets in mass in an effort to end the rule of Haitian bald-headed party, the U.S.-backed political party with close ties to the Clintons. For six days, thousands of Haitians have marched through the country's capital of Port-au-Prince and other major cities, calling for Moise's ouster for corruption and gross economic mismanagement in the recent years, much of which can be traced directly back to the 2010, um, 2010 earthquake and the subsequent U.S.-U.N. relief effort that led to rigged elections caused by a deadly cholera outbreak and sought to turn the entire country into one massive sweatshop for American clothing companies. More specifically, Moise has ignited popular ire after being implicated in the embezzlement of a $4 billion loan given to the Haitian government to develop the country via Venezuela's Petro Caribe program for his failure to combat the double digit inflation that has further impoverished the Caribbean nation. That was only like two paragraphs and the title. Okay, so in 2004. The European tribes came back to Haiti as proprietor and landowner, and they built the largest U.S. embassy in the Western Hemisphere in Haiti, and it is the fourth largest U.S. embassy in the world. While they're telling you we have no resources, they are building themselves a footprint that's bigger than all their other embassies, and, except for four. And three. what's the relevance of that? They need a place to store all they are acquiring. All in, the different, plundering. Mm -hmm. in different part of Haiti right now, while people are sleeping or doing their own business, they are digging. What they dig, they take with the soil, with them. And when they leave, they just leave the hole wide open. In the northern part of the country, where companies go to mine gold, when they take the gold out, they don't do anything with the soil to assist the people that are living there. So the resources that we have on the lands are being excavated and taken into cars and leaving at night. And beyond gold now, the other resources that are critically Petroleum. important. Oil. oil. Um, Haitian geologist says that Haiti's oil is bigger than Venezuela's oil, which has the biggest cachet. They say that Haiti's oil is a swimming pool to Venezuela's cup of water. Haiti, also, you have to understand, how, how does oil come? Haiti is on a tectonic, four tectonic plates, making that oil. It's on the Caribbean basin, the North American uh, tectonic plate, the South American tectonic plate, and the Atlantic tectonic plate. Massive oil, because that's how the, that's how what's the same thing with the Middle East, okay? But another thing, Haiti has an extraterrestrial material that is found nowhere else in the world except South Africa, and it's the purest in Haiti. Sixty-five million years ago, an asteroid landed in the, this space. Mm -hmm. We have an asteroid mountain in different places. We have mountains; mm -hmm. they're made of asteroid. They use this asteroid because it's the remain of this asteroid that is so uh, uh, heat resistant that they use for spacecrafts. Mm -hmm. They have been um, Professor Henry Vixamar of Haiti says one ton of Haiti's iridium, iridium. I wanted to get iridium to yeah. is worth $45 billion. Mm. We have mountains of it. So what the UN occupation is, is that they put soldiers and private military contractors in UN uniforms. They're everywhere in Haiti, digging out the mountains. You can and go to mocking. Haiti. And, yes, you can, you, you can see, mm -hmm. like I, I was in Haiti one time, and I saw 12 UN trucks with these uh, uh, dirt, black dirt, mm -hmm. just going through. I'm like, yeah. So they literally, since 1986, with the, the fall of Duvalier, mm -hmm. the U.S. military has been taking out Haiti's uh, uh, iridium. But in addition to, they say, we have 20, 000, 20 billion worth of gold, 8 billion worth of copper, 120 billion worth of uh, oil, and this iridium, we have mountains of it. Mm -hmm. The United States is in Haiti because of its economic and strategic interests. We are also between Cuba and Venezuela. We're right in the middle, and strategically, they want that space. So Protests are turning deadly. <laughs> The crowd wants the president to get the hell out of his office. They loathe his government for corruption, for all kinds of cheating at the election. The nation's not just poor, it's starving. Rich people in this 
country, running this country, earned everything, and we had to make the massive population dying, hunger, and misery like this. A bit of polling trivia from the poorest country in the Caribbean. The last presidential election had to be rerun after claims of fraud, but the follow-up, which put President Moise in power, wasn't exactly a model of democracy. The turnout was only a fifth. Every tenth ballot sheet was never counted for different reasons. In some cases, that would be more than enough to set off what I call the legitimacy radar alarm in Washington. Not this time. Trump sent his people to congratulate the new leader. His diplomats said they were proud of Haiti. The Haitian people deserve to have democratically elected leaders. Today's inauguration of a democratically elected president allows Haiti to return to democratic and constitutional rule. So, what do you do with that kind of rapprochement? Show that you're a big fan of the man in charge there. President Trump and I are entrepreneurs. Men all an entrepreneur wants is results. And therefore, I hope we'll put everything in place to make sure we deliver for our peoples. But could such words of warmth ever end up turning into something like this? Ham of Venezuela. Donald Trump, hands but Venezuela. The Trump government is not going to side with the Haitian people because they need that Haitian government for its project of overthrowing the Venezuelan government. So, back to news from Haiti. Several days of protests put the capital on the brink of chaos. The furious Haitians are on the edge. A group of UN powers, including America, came up with a communique, i.e. condemnation of the escalating violence. They want the president to speed up reforms. Well, the only thing that came out of the State Department in four days was... This travel security alert. Haiti security alert. The security situation remains very unstable. If you hear gunfire or protest groups, seek shelter inside your house immediately and stay away from the windows. And no one's yet picking a substitute for the elected leader. But of course, this relative silence isn't simply about someone saying nice things about Donald Trump. This is the nature of, we can say, American power in the world today. It is filled with hypocrisy. In Haiti, it is the vast majority of the population which is turning out to demand Jovenel Moise's uh, departure. And yet not a word from Mike Pence, not a word from Pompeo, the Secretary of State, not a word from Donald Trump. So this double standard, this hypocrisy is typical, we can say, of U.S. foreign policy. Haiti and Venezuela, neighbors on the map, but it looks like they're nowhere near each other. And the of those gurus of real democracy. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that